In Blue Lock, Hiori is often a character I see that gets overlooked since he's not particularly one of the best strikers in the series, and you could probably even argue that he's not a main character. But recently in the manga, Hiori's been getting some hype, and I'd like to basically go over why he's getting this hype, and why it actually makes sense for his character quite a bit. And also of course get my future predictions for Hiori and if he'll be an important character in the future or not. But in my opinion, I think he definitely will change Blue Lock for the better. But before we begin, I'd like to also ask you to like the video if you enjoy it, and subscribe to my channel since I make Blue Lock content. And also consider joining my membership to gain access to the members only discord server. But with that out of the way, let's begin this video going in chronological order, starting from where Hiori first appeared. Hiori debuted in chapter 94, which is of course the start of the final selection matches, and this already gives us a vague idea of his skills. He was obviously able to beat the block man and do the 100 goals test or whatever, so he's definitely no slouch when it comes to his abilities. But we first get to see Hiori play in the first match of the final selection matches, and the first thing we learn about him is his relationship with the other players. He's able to easily break down characters like Tapi Tokara saying that after he uses his sharp powers of analysis to designate the other team's weakest player, he tries to thoroughly crush them until the end of the game. And he also tells Isagi that Karasu has his sights set on him, which is kind of a weird statement if you take it at face value, since it means that Isagi is worse than Hiyori, but it also would mean Isagi is worse than players like Nanase who is also on his team. But maybe we're all just sleeping on Nanase. But anyways, Hiyori tells Isagi that him and Karasu used to play on the same use team, and he also tells Isagi that he can tell him to give up on his trying to hide his weak points and just challenge him with his strong points. But he not only knows about the abilities of Karasu, but also knows the abilities of the number 4 player in blue lock, Otoya. But even knowing Otoya and Karasu's abilities, Hiori alone isn't able to stop them. For this reason, he links up with Rin to be able to stop them together, and Hiori is able to perfectly match up with Rin and even perfectly copies the passes that Isagi was making to Rin. With Isagi even noting that Hiori is an incredible passer. We get to learn more of his passing abilities in the Neo Egoist League as well, and this is one of the main reasons that I do think he'll become one of the most important players. But Hiori's passing abilities aren't the only thing that's top notch. He also has pretty amazing spatial awareness and football IQ. We see that in chapter 100, a whole 83 chapters before Metavision was even involved into the series, Isagi had noticed that Hiori is always rapidly turning his head to verify the situation around him, all while calmly keeping up with Rin's passing, showing that even while Hiori doesn't have Metavision per se at this time, he does have the very concept of it in his mind and could very well evolve to have this ability. With this amazing vision, Hiori is also able to pass the ball to the perfect spots and he almost passes the ball to Rin to get a goal but it was unfortunately stopped by Shido, who got to the same place as Rin. But this match easily showed that Hiyori's passing and football IQ is definitely no joke. Hiyori with his passing is also able to keep up with Isagi, and along with Isagi and Nanase, they're able to completely dominate the field, and Hiyori's vision is able to link up with Isagi's and pass it to the perfect place where Isagi wanted it to go, but unfortunately, Isagi was one step behind and ended up failing the goal. But this does show that Hiyori can completely understand Isagi's plays and can even link up with him at a high level. After this play, Play, Hiyori goes up to Isagi and tells him that he was one step too short, and Isagi says that the pass that Hiyori gave was perfect and Isagi's evaluation and visualization were also spot on, but he couldn't reach the goal because of his physical abilities. Isagi goes on to say that his thinking was on point but his body just can't keep up, and Hiyori responds with an interesting response, telling him that if he thinks it out and then moves, it's too slow. Hiyori then says going from seeing to thinking to moving. The speed of that process may have worked against the opponents he's faced previously, but it's a different story when competing for goals with Rin and Shido. Isagi doesn't have the same abilities as them, so he'll always come up short if he tries to use the same play speed as them. Isagi's confused and then asks him what he's supposed to do, and Hiyori responds, why not try thinking reflexively? That'll put you in a world of feeling. This one statement from Hiyori works leaps and bounds for Isagi's playstyle and senses, and Hiyori is able to link up with this amped up Isagi and dominate Shigiri in a battle and ends up passing the ball to Isagi. This pass from Hiyori was completely perfect and it ended up allowing Isagi to not only surpass Rin but also surpass Shido and score the final goal of the game. This flow state that Isagi was able to dip his toes into was only able to be achieved because Hiyori was in the match. After the match when Isagi asked Hiyori why did he advise him to think reflexively, Isagi straight up tells Hiyori that he couldn't have made the goal if he didn't tell him that and Hiyori responds asking Isagi does he ever play video games. Isagi responds mainly just soccer games and Hiyori replies to him saying that he's a pretty hardcore gamer and he asks him if he knows about those falling games mainly talking about a game like Tetris. He continues to say that they go slow at first so you move the pieces after thinking about it but the pieces gradually fall faster and faster 
until eventually there's no time to think. When it comes to the speed needed to keep up with Ren and Shido, think of it as a similar level of difficulty. And Isagi then comes to the conclusion that he'll be too slow if he moves after perceiving things like he had been before. Hiori goes on to say that incredible gamers process things insanely fast and rely on their fingers to respond reflexively. And he goes on to say that this can be done in soccer as well, and why not try thinking about how to adapt? And Isagi goes on to think that the moment he was able to process all the moving pieces simultaneously at high speeds in the game allowed him to arrive at the shot point before anyone else. And Hiori goes on to finish, saying that it was only because he accumulated so much experience thus far. Just thinking about the fact that one statement from Hiori allowed Isaga to gain access to his flow state quite easily is pretty insane considering Hiori wasn't even thought of as a main character at this point. But Hiori really solidifies himself as a main character in the Blue Hawk vs Japan U20 game. And while Hiori isn't a starting 11 for the Blue Hawk team, when he's subbed in for Shigiri, he does show some pretty incredible prowess. As soon as Hiori subs in, he begins linking up with Isagi, and Isagi says that they got a change in tactics since Hiori's on the front line. He goes on to say up until now, they've had Rin acting as their nucleus with everyone else running around, letting them utilize their weapons in unstoppable coordination with an active style. But Hiori's plays excel in their quiet vision and ball touch. He's a quiet technician who creates space on the front line. And the reason that Hiori was subbed in wasn't for plays that let him dodge players one on one, but it was for inspiring passes that matches their movements. And Hiori's first pass to Karasu surprises even the U20 Japan players, with them saying that it was a fast outside pass and it was tight. And while linking up with Karasu, they're able to hit the enemy's weak spot and create a free moment in the field. In this moment, we see that Hiyori is trying to play reflexively, similar to how he told Isagi to play in the game that we just went over. And with this calm and collective reflexive play, He's able to kick the ball all the way up the field, all the way up to Nagi, and Sendo on the U20 team even said his trajectory was similar to one of Seitoshi's passes. And it's pretty insane that Hiori can even replicate something even close to what Sei can do. Considering that Sei is one of the new Gen 11 players, and arguably probably the best midfielder we've seen to date. We also see that because of Hiori's amazing soccer vision, when other players such as Ryu and Botra see him looking around for the bad spots, they feel 100% confident in just playing their role rather than looking for them as well, because Hiori already has it covered. But that's all Hiyori did in the U20 game, he was obviously no slouch and basically showed his amazing abilities in this match, but some of his way more impressive feats come from the Neo Egoist League when he's playing for Germany. Hiyori really began getting character development in the Neo Egoist League, starting in chapter 206 where we get his backstory. Now this backstory may not seem all too important, but trust me it is, and it also gets into another theory about the Bullock manga covers and what they mean. Hiyori's father was a national silver medalist in judo, and his mother was ranked second nationally in in their running high jump. To appease their regrets at not becoming first, they wanted their child Hiyori to be a top athlete. So Hiyori was already born with a huge expectation on him that he would become a top athlete in some way. And we see that his parents made him undergo special training every day in soccer. And they even forced him to do it even when he just wanted to play soccer normally with his friends. And he only really played soccer because it made them happy. But one day, Hiyori woke up to a huge argument that his mother and father were having and the argument basically ended in them both saying that if Hiyori doesn't become the world's best, then they're getting divorced. When he overhears this, it makes him fall and cut his leg, and when his parents noticed that he was there, they went over to consult him about it, but rather than answering his question of is it his fault and consulting his feelings, they would rather tend to his leg and ask if it's broken. And this even leads to his father yelling at him about twisting his leg. And Hiyori at this young age finally realizes that they don't love him, but they rather just love his talent. But with this huge feeling that he needs to keep playing soccer or else his family will split up, he continues playing. Eventually he ended up meeting Karasu, and Karasu actually comments on Hiyori's skill, saying that he has amazing ball handling skills and soccer IQ, but in the end, his tenacity at the goal is mediocre, and it seems like his body and mind aren't in sync, and he comes to the conclusion that Hiyori doesn't really like soccer. Which is of course true, and Hiyori even admits that going to Blue Lock was really just a place so he can escape his parents. A place of refuge based on the thing that he hates the most, but also the thing he's expected to excel at. Now the reason this is important is because recently Hiyori actually got his own volume cover for the Blue Lock manga, and it depicts his collar is very thin, and his chain being connected to something like a weight, or maybe even a bomb. 
And this kind of fits up with the ongoing theory that the blue eye collars and chains represent something of the ego of the players, such as with Say's chain being broken, indicating that he had his ego broken when he went overseas. I have a whole video on Say if you want to go more in depth on that, but Hiyori having this weight or bomb does definitely make sense since we already know that he doesn't really like soccer and it's really weighing down on him emotionally or it could even be thought as a ticking time bomb for his family because if he quits it, then his parents get a divorce. But moving on to what I think is the most important part of this video, comes in the most recent chapter of the block manga as of recording this, which is 225. And this chapter truly shows how Hiyori's thought process differs from normal people, or normal players I should say. In this chapter, after Noah and Noah got fouled by Aiku, both Corona and Ikuguri are very surprised at this, and they want to call for a foul, but Hiyori's the only one that notices that the Germany team actually has the advantage here. Now that may seem very little to you guys, but it gets more interesting as we go further into the chapter. A little later, after Yukimiya passes it to Isagi, Ikuguri believes that the pass is perfect, but Hiyori's the only one that notices that this is actually not very good, since it's up in the air, and before he even finishes what he says, Snuffy stops the pass. At the end of this chapter, Isagi says that it was a one a million chance and his visualization was correct but he needs one more step to go above and beyond in this world-class battle. Isagi says that he needs someone who perfectly shares the same visualizations as him. And Hiyori in his mind at this time is saying that he was able to see this world that Isagi was. Now there were theories earlier in this game that Hiyori would be subbed in, specifically when Ness fouled Isagi and tried to stop his goal, but now truly seems like the prime time for Hiyori to gain his shine back. Because before this in the new Egoist League, Hiyori was mainly showed up by Corona, who basically replaced him for Isagi with their whole coordination and planet hotline. But because Hiyori's already shown the fundamental ideas of how to gain meta vision, and because currently we see that he's probably able to see at the same level as Isagi, I do believe that he will come into the game and will save it for the team. And while Hiyori might not become one of the best strikers in the block program, he probably will become one of the best assisters, or maybe midfielders, since we already do know he's able to pass with a trajectory similar to Seitoshi. But that's all I have for today. If you enjoyed the video, of course, make sure to like and subscribe to my channel since I do block content and also consider joining my membership to get early access to videos and also join the members only discord but yeah goodbye